Okay, so here I'm working on the real, on the, the, our real painting of this. I've simplified it a whole lot. This is the third drawing I've done before I really, because uh, the first two, I didn't recognize just how much I needed to simplify it. It was just, it was not good, that's all. So here's what I'm doing. You can see there's color change in this, and, and this may not be dark enough in the end. We might have to add to it or not. I'm kind of, <laughs> looking at these as inspiration because I like these so much better than this. Have I got everything in place? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, right now I have the drawing of the limbs, the trunks of this very, um, it's a very interesting little grove of trees here. And I assume that there's some kind of, that they're olive trees. Uh, someone could correct me on that if it looks wrong to you. I think I'll add a little water to this one. And maybe a little right there, kind of graduated into where there's going to be uh, foliage later. So I like the shapes that I drew here. And so I would like to keep a lot of them. Sophie's protecting me from something. You know, it's good to know that you're safe. Enough, Sophie. Thank you. So, see, I'm kind of, you can see that I'm not being very neat with this. I'm kind of breaking it up. There's little spots in it. There's little, uh, just things happening. And then I'm dropping in some permanent brown. You know, place or two. Okay, let's keep going. Because this, I love the way that these trees, the tree in the picture grows, except it is so jumbled that you can't see, you can't really appreciate the interesting shapes because it's kind of uh, a lot of limbs are crammed in a little tighter than what I want them. So here we've got air between them. Okay, so what I don't want to do is just get routine with this and start to just uh, do it any which way. I want I want these like little broken up bits of stuff. Let's just go ahead and pick up a little bit of red here. That red just makes a nice accent in there. I love charging color into another color and I don't do that enough with my classes. I think I'm going to make that one of our priority items. So, the thing is, you know, maybe I would lift a little bit in a place or two. Or, maybe I would add a little bit of phthalo green in a place or two. I don't want this to look like a Christmas tree. Oh, well, it does right now, doesn't it? I think I'm going to have to add a little more brown to my greens. There, see, that'll mute and make kind of just a, a, a cool brown, kind of a gray. And then again, where this goes into I started to call it ground cover, you know, it's just whatever grows on the ground. Okay, so you can see right there. The thing is to be thoughtful about what we're doing here. So this is a very juicy mix that I'm putting down there. I like having that paint just flow off the end. 
I actually get a little bit more creative with my shapes when it's doing that. And I know some of you, it probably makes you freeze and go the opposite way. But I think it's just a matter of getting used to it. It's just that you can do it with such a light touch that you can get a little bit more playful. Here, we ought to have a branch going that way. Yeah, that's all of this one. Every now and then I've thickened an area because, you know, I think virtually all trees are wider as you go down. They don't get thinner as you go down. The tree would fall over. But I see that happen and I catch myself sometimes having some area like that. I immediately fix it because I'm very aware of it even though I'm not a uh, landscape person. But enough of y'all have been unhappy with me about not doing enough landscapes, so I'm doing my best. Okay, that limb's kind of straight. Let's just mess it up a little bit. There, that's a little chunkier looking. That looks more like what I expect of an olive tree. The fact is, I've never actually met an olive tree. I'm sure that I would really like them if I met them. I love trees. Okay, so once again, I've dropped in a little bit of green in some places. And once again, it looks too much like a Christmas tree. So I'll just put a little burnt umber back into that. It's fun to mix these on here. So I don't get rid of all the green. There'll be a little tweaks of green that stayed green within all of that. And it'll just make it prettier in the long run. We hope. Okay. So let's get that dry. Just remember how, how slow and thoughtful I was with it. If you're great at this and you're used to whacking out good looking trees, that's one thing. But if you're, if you're like me, uh, I tried to whack out a video last night of this. And uh, I had to back up and totally get rid of it, start over. Oh, I don't like that. See, I'm going to add a little bit more brown in here. Okay, maybe I'll stop right there. That may still be a bit too colorful, but it'll dry a little duller. Okay, so now let's start on the top. Once again, this has become my inspiration because I like it. I like it. Uh, so, um, here I've got a sponge. And, and here's the thing about a sponge. It looks like a great tool. Well, it can be. Tear a little of that off right there. It can be, but the thing is, it can also be a monster. If you just take it and you start stamp, 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 stamping, and especially if you do it fast, because the uh, you have to give the paint a little time to come off of there. Uh, there's just this thing that people tend to do that just I, I've seen the most awful art created with a sponge. So, you know, I've been hesitant about teaching with it. Uh, but it can do really good things when used just a little bit and carefully. It can, it can do really good things. 
All right, so I'm going to start making some of, of our first layer of green. And here's the thing. that I had a little phthalo green in there, and I just left it. Uh, let's see. Let's use, let's use cerulean. So I wound up with a mixture of blues here, but cerulean would be perfect here. And let's do, um, let's see, cerulean, and let's do, oh, let's see, let me think, what would be the perfect yellow for that? What yellow would I like? Hmm, couldn't be Quinn Gold, could it? Well, of course it could. So let's test this on something, if we can find something. That's kind of going to throw your eye when you look at that. Let's. That could be pretty nice. Uh, we may have to thin it just a little bit. And the thing is, we can always thin it when it's on the paper, too. Let's also put out a little bit of Quinn Gold right over here. In case we want to add some. Okay. Move this stuff over. So hopefully you can see. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that I'm on screen here. So I'm going to put the, uh, this piece up here where I can see it. You probably can't, but... I can, and I'm going to keep this in my view, too. So let's start out. Let's just wet down a little bit of this sponge. And my thinking is that I'm going to run this, the top of the tree, right off of the page. So the thing about this sponge is I can use it to make some really nice lacy areas. So we're getting some interesting edges here. Now, I want that to be juicy, and it's going to start drying on me, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up a brush. And I'm going to fill in a whole lot of this. Back down here, I'll probably fill it all in. So I'm kind of adding around. You know, that could even be a little bit darker than what I wanted. This started drying over here. I obviously did not get it down juicy enough. And let's leave this little thing just swinging out there like that. That's, that's great. Uh, add a few little spots. Okay, uh, I think I would like to thin some of this out, so I'll just add water to it, and I'll let the water flow into it and move it around. And let's, I want some of these openings, as long as they're little openings. I don't want great big gaps. When you get those great big gaps, they just look ridiculous. Now, that's not the same thing as a space between, you know, limbs or things where there's a big opening. This is just the textural stuff. Okay, so now, uh, maybe I'll just add a, a little bit of, I was gonna use Queen Gold, but there's a lot of gold in that. So maybe I'll just drop a little bit of Cerulean in several places. Not everywhere. You could even tilt this a little bit, you know, and get it to, to run a little bit. That just, that's nice. That's very nice. I like that. So, what did I do with my sponge? Here's my sponge. And I'm wound, wound up just using this little bit of it. Uh, if, if you try to work with a sponge too big, you kind of lose control of... Uh, sometimes you wind up with shapes you really didn't plan on. So part of doing this is that it does help me leave some little bitty open spaces in here. 
but I don't want big open spaces all through this. I want, boy, that was drippy, looky there. I want something that'll help me have those kind of that lacy look and some lacy edges. We just put a little bit of stuff down there. Okay, so let's start filling that in. Because see, you can see how if I left it like that, it would just be totally gibberish and confusing. So I've got to unite these pieces. I'm coming right off the top here. Can't wait to see what y'all do with this. I've got some really good artists that have done some great stuff on this. And then I have other people who surprise me, you know, that that come up with stuff I never even thought to do with this. It's just really uh been fun. So again, I think that's too many little openings there. Let's close more of those up. I'm, I'm, I'm just selectively taking out as I go. And then down here, you know, I was going to keep some. That's just going to be some lacy stuff down there. I think I'll put this behind that limb. Oh, what am I going to do out here? Well, you know, I think I'm going to lighten that just a little bit there, like that. And then let's pick up a little bit of that blue. And, and oh, wait a minute. First, let's pick up a little bit of water and suck up a little bit of this color. I don't want this to be too dark. And my mixture, I like to start out with a mixture a little darker than what I'm really going to wind up with. Not always, but in a lot of cases when I'm painting, I like to do that. And so, uh, then I wind up having to go back though. And normally in my painting process, I'll suck up or, or, or you know, uh, soften some edges and make some good things happen. So let's drop in a little bit of this blue now. Again, again, not everywhere. We just, just pick. I guess I'm sort of putting it on the bottom, but it wasn't really a plan to do that. Uh, I could have had a plan. It's okay for you to have plans. Some of you have brilliant plans. I had a plan once when I thought I had a great idea. I thought. A lot of people would like to have their own German Shepherd puppy, and they would take such good care of it, and they would make happy families. <laughs> so not all ideas work out. So this little tree that I'm sort of taking inspiration from down here, it's got a whole lot less foliage on it. And I'm running it off the side of the page there. And I'm going to pull some down in here. Okay, that should be enough. Let's take a brush again. There. Add a little water to the brush this time. So you notice sometimes I just drop in a little dot. It's sort of like I was spattering, but I'm not. I've got enough randomness because of the sponge that uh, there wouldn't be a thing wrong with you splattering this, though. Mm. I need a connection right in there. And I think I need more on this side. I couldn't fit the sponge in there anyway. So this looks a little like, again, like it's had a hard life. Okay, 
I need a little more solidity there. But these are, because these are thinly, you know, this is sparser foliage, I can leave more openings in it. But I need to be careful about the shape of the openings. And some of it is I'm just looking at it and thinking, does that seem tree-like? Okay, once again. And this, you don't want these trees to look like totally separated. Where they overlap, they overlap. So let that, let that happen. Um. It's a little bit dark. I think I'm going to. Drop a little more blue in. That'll add some excitement. Let's see. See, I pull up a little so I can add a little more something else, too. That's another way thing to do. All right. There we go. Of course, my plan had been to put a wash of blue in the background. And I forgot. <gasps> I really did forget. But the thing is, I have gotten really good results from just sort of painting it in in between. And some of my greens, let's see. Let's start over here because this will be less wet. we we'll just pull this. This could go on down into the foliage here, if need be. So I'm working down here, and then I'm going to come up into some greens that are now I'm making this a lot lighter than in the photo. Because I really want some dark light value contrast here. So I want to keep this blue pretty weak. So at some point, some of those little dots I dropped in are going to get wet because they're they've they've got a little more pigment standing in them that is beaded up in them. And uh I could very well decide that I like that. See where this is, one is drifting into the other? Well, that's what I discovered here recently. Can look really good. I'm going over that little patch of what's going to be green that I forgot. Well, I don't know if I forgot because it's probably, uh, it's probably more that I'm going to call it ground cover. It's not really ground cover, but... So little bits of this green are going to leak here. And I'm going to get some softer edges. Yeah, pretty nice. This is just cerulean. And I don't need to put that between every little light spot in there. Most of those are going to disappear. If at the very end I feel that I have to patch something in there, I will. You could even go over these limbs. It might even be good for them if you did. So see, that's running together a little bit. That just helps make nice transitions. 
Now, as we're coming over this way, this was painted more recently, so it's still wet. Let's start down here at the bottom around the limbs. And I don't mind if there's some little sparkles in the sky. See, I can just pull up a little bit of paint there that was getting a little darker than I would want, and I'll move it over here. Okay. They're just happy little trees. I've got my Bob Ross socks on today. I have Bob Ross socks. Some of that blue come in here, too. See, that makes those nice transitions. That was a little streaky over here. Good. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. See, I didn't put my foliage in down here yet, either. That's where that break in the limb is, because there's some foliage going to come through there. Well, I can't do it now. So, let's let that dry. Of course, if you're in class, you might have to do it with a hairdryer. But we can only use one hairdryer. So, maybe you can't. We'll figure it out. See, I've got some little skips, some little light places. That's, that's, that's not a problem. I like this better this way. I think this is a better way to do this, the way that I did it now, instead of putting that sky wash in first. This has more of an activity to it, but it's a, it's a gentle activity. Okay, let's go off and leave this, and we'll, we'll get back together in a few minutes. Okay, here's what's happening now. I added some more cerulean and some uh, uh, cad yellow light to my uh, already existing um, olive mixture. Olive mixture for olive trees. And so... Got a little bit finer sponge here. And I'm mostly interested in getting some lacy edges right down along here where this is going to lap over the uh, cliff. So, now I'm taking my brush and noodling around in there. Where I softened the edge on these trees is doing a lot better than where I didn't here.
You could have some other little patches of green if you wanted. I made this green area a lot smaller than in the uh, photograph. In fact, uh, I kept a lot of it that was up in here out so that we had more sky because I like these shapes in here. And I wanted to keep that look. So, oh, I might fill in a little bit more of this. Where I've got just tiny, tiny dots, so I'm pretty happy with that. So let's see, should we put a little queen gold in that? Because it's kind of missing queen gold, isn't it? Whoops. Dipped in the wrong place. Okay, let's let that go. So, I'm going to photograph this at this stage. Of course, this gets more layers. In fact, the trunks probably get more layers. But I think y'all probably need something that shows that stage uh, to help you kind of hold on to that. And I don't know whether to print it out or just send it out on phones. Uh it's, all this printing gets a little bit expensive after a while. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's where I am stopping this lesson. Of course, this will dry paler. But anyway, you got the idea. It's never done. I forgot, and I added some, uh, an area so it, that, so that there's a little bit of ground cover back in behind the trees, not just in front. That's all. Bye.